On the other side of the road here, you can see there's a big stone. This is Ale Ujazdowski in the uh, center of Warsaw. This is the diplomatic area. There's a lot of embassies uh, around here. And in Nazi times during the occupation from 1939 until January of 45, maybe it's fair to say until the beginning of the Warsaw Uprising, uh, this was the government quarter. Now the stone marks the point, or rather where the uh, Franz Kutschera, who was the head of the SS and the police, as from the 25th of September 1943, was assassinated. He wasn't quite assassinated there because he was assassinated on the road and so what I'm going to do here I'll just show you how this assassination actually took place now uh, Kuchera didn't want people to know where he lived which was quite understandable uh, he's responsible for all sorts of street executions which were taking place uh, in, in Warsaw October November December January 43 44 he is the name most associated with the street executions which uh, possibly isn't entirely fair because the policy was thought of before he arrived but he made it much worse now he was living in um, Allée Rouge which is up here it's a second street off on the right car going up there right now and uh, he kept it secret but the Polish resistance managed to find out where he was living uh, around uh, the end of December 1943 and therefore planned an attack on him and one day as he was driving to work in fact this was a second attempt the first attempt didn't come off because he didn't actually go to work on that day but on the second attempt he came down here and the uh, he got to this point here his he was um, he was blocked by one car and the two other cars also took took part they shot at him wounded him somebody came up finished him off at close range then had a look, uh, it, it got his bag off him, I took his weapon out off him. Unfortunately, it took too much time in doing all of this and a gunfight started. And um, the result of that was that some of the resistance fighters themselves were uh, injured and uh, in it. Indeed, afterwards, they, they, they did manage to capture some of the, uh, the resistance fighters that actually took part in this. As a result, Oh, what an idiot driving that loud. That really sort of felt, winds me up. Why do people have to, what's, he, what's the point of that? Anyway, um, as a result of the uh, assassination of Kuchera, the Nazis murdered some 300 people. 100 were murdered uh, near here, um, just off Ali um, Oyazdovsky, and 200 were murdered in the uh, Warsaw Ghetto, or the remains of the Warsaw Ghetto, because that was, it was just ruins there by this time. Of course, the uh, Jewish population had been completely um, removed to, uh, to Treblinka, mainly, uh, by, by, uh, by the time that this uh, actually happened. Now, um, Kuchera himself came from Klagenfurt. He was an Austrian. He was born in 1904. Uh, it seems as though he took part in the First World War because he went off to sea in 1918, joined the Austrian Navy. Uh, didn't have much of a navy, but it did take part in a number of battles. And uh, he came back from the war, and then he went off to become a, do what his father did. He came from just the south of um, uh, Vienna and um, he got a job in um, Czechoslovakia as, as a gardener. Now, changing the subject slightly here, should you ever find yourself in Klagenfurt, there's, uh, go to the McDonald's, which is on Wiener Gasse. Now, the reason I mention this is that um, this wasn't always a McDonald's, it once had another name. Indeed, the authorities in Klagenfurt have a little bit of a problem because Austria's best ever singer, somebody, called, I mean, in terms of records, sold somebody called Udo Jürgens, and I, I believe he's got the, he has the record over 100 million singles. I might even be the best ever singer in the German language as far as singles are concerned. I'm not too certain of that one. Anyway. Uh, Udo started off his career there at the McDonald's, only it wasn't called McDonald's then, it was called the Tanz Café Lurk. And at the Tanz Café Lurk, there was 
uh, was owned by a Mr. Lurk, and uh, this Mr. Lurk in particular, he uh, when Udo turned up, he just um, Mr. Lurk just got back from Italy where he'd been hiding because he thought the authorities were after him for his role in the murder of 1.6 million people in Lublin during the Second World War. Um, the Tans Cafe Lurk had previously been called the Cafe Lurk and um, it was owned by Mr. Lurk's father and this was a place where a number of Nazis used to hang out uh, such as Odilo Globotnik, uh, Kaltenbrunner used to hang out there um, I think that Richard Tomala was another one that actually used to hang out there and also Kuchera I believe also hung out there and so this formed a group of people who was deeply involved in crime in this country mainly in operation uh, Reinhardt although Kutcher himself wasn't involved in that and uh, this is how they came together and this was this McDonald's and should any actual viewer be in Klagenfurt, you get me some photographs and send them to me because the only ones I'm using in my videos are ones from uh, McDonald's and I, I think I could understand them not wanting for me to be using uh, their material. Hey, we'll just have a quick walk up here whilst I'm, uh, whilst I'm talking to you about this. Now, um, uh, Kuchera himself was involved uh, in the underground Nazi movement because in Austria it had been um, banned and he even served a term in prison as a result of it. Having said that once uh, Nazi Germany occupied Austria, he uh, the good time started for him, he got himself all sorts of jobs including that as being a member of parliament in the Reichstag and um, he was in, in the SS was his day job, he was also on the People's Court uh, amongst many other things as well. He was involved uh, in the uh, uh, repressions that took place behind the front uh, in what is today Belarus, and so even they had an operation which they named after him uh, and uh, indeed following his death here in Warsaw they, um, they named the uh, NSS unit from Klagenfurt uh, after him anyway so that's a quick video on Kuchera. Uh, I've done a much longer video, which, uh, as I, well, I say, I've done it, I've written it, I haven't put it together yet. And should you be interested, then of course, as always, you might want to subscribe. Now, this street down here on the right now, that's Allée Rouge. And that is where, uh, that's where he was living. And now one thing about Kuchera is this, is that they, they put up these posters, but he didn't have his name on the poster. Um, so before, often you see the, the names, these people have been shot and it's signed by somebody. You've got the name of the criminal responsible for giving the order, which is Ludwig Hein, for example, uh, or others. In the case of Kuchera, he didn't have his name on it. He just had his position, the, the uh, police and SS Führer for uh, the Warsaw district and the reason was because I think he was frightened of what the consequences could be for him as it turned out he, would, he was right to be afraid and he paid the price um, after he died it was a very curious thing they, they laid on a special funeral for him the same as did for Heydrich uh, in two years earlier in Prague and uh, his then girlfriend who was from Norway was actually pregnant and uh, she uh, they arranged a marriage sort of a post uh, death marriage ceremony for them so she so he got married on the day of his funeral uh, not many people have done that so um, and the son actually turned out to be a famous mountaineer. He was the first person to actually conquer a, uh, a peak in the Himalayas in, I was about 1965 or there, thereabouts. He died in 2000 and, uh, ah, I'm almost, 2004, I think he was 59 years old, something like that. So, uh, okay, so you found it interesting. Thanks so much for listening. And um, you might want to see the longer video once I get it done.